Hello folks, Dave Shoki here with the Twin Home Experts. Well, here we are under a lot of pressure. We've been called out by a client out of New York who's had multiple, multiple contractors try to locate a sewer odor and a very foul odor in another bathroom here. So we're gonna go ahead and utilize our knowledge, our technology, as well as our um, antimicrobials and air scrubbing equipment to locate and pinpoint these leaks. So come for the ride. All right, guys, well, the first step is gonna be making sure that you've got all the right equipment. We've got smoking candles here. We've got uh, little micro cameras. We've got foggers. We've got um, our antimicrobials, masks, crawl suits. So first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go underneath that house and I'm gonna verify the condition of the plumbing as well as if I can identify or verify if there's any rodent defecation and see if I can trace out where that smell is. All right, guys, so one of the uh, most common causes of sewer odors is when you have drain, your drain system running flat. It needs to at least have a quarter of an inch per foot. I have a level here, and I'm putting it onto this, uh, this uh, two-inch waste pipe that feeds the laboratory, and it's uh, completely that's, that's flat. Right. Uh, this is about a 10-foot run, so uh, if it's not the cause of the sewer odor, well, eventually, because it's a flat line, you're going to collect a breeze, and it's going to cause constant backups. All right, guys, so I'm directly below where the sewer odor is. There's a bathroom right above me, and right here is a toilet. So what we're going to do, because this has been newly remodeled, there is a possibility that inside the wall there's a break or a breach. So we're going to pull this coupling, slide it down, and run our camera up through the vent versus tearing up the walls. So a, a good colored camera is great, especially when you have access like this in the crawl space. It gives you plenty of access to the piping. So that's what we're going to do next here to verify and confirm if the waste and the vent pipe going up has any breaches. All right, we're gonna go ahead. Now we disconnected the toilet vent and um, we're gonna go ahead and run the camera up the ventilation in the wall. Again, this helps us to go inside the home and, and uh, prevent opening up the, uh, the wall. Uh, as you can see, we're dealing with cast iron pipe and now we're inside the wall going up and this appears to be a galvanized two inch vent pipe and this right now is just feeding the toilet So far, I don't see any breaches. Condition of the vent looks to be in good shape. And pull back a little bit. Slow. Okay, now go in. Slow. And right there, a little bit of a connection there. That could possibly be an issue, but uh, we'll see if we can get past that. Go ahead and try to get past that. Harder. All right, guys, so look at this. So look at nice and clean vent pipe. And as we go forward, go forward. as we go forward, jump it hard. Look at the amount of debris go. that's in this vent right here. Hey, pull back, pull back. There's my wonderful forehead. Pull back a little bit, couple inches, right? Slow, yep, right, keep going. And then it just dead ends right into a bunch of debris. Looks like some type of clothy material. This is definitely an issue here. Pull back. And then we pull back out and we're... Back out. Now into the pipe. 
All right, folks, so we are on the second floor. The camera, remember we showed you the full compaction of the debris. This is a great piece of uh, tool that allows us to pinpoint exactly where our camera head is. All right, folks, so what we're gonna do is we've uh, disconnected the old galvanized coming out from the wall. We're gonna cap that off. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're gonna be doing a, a smoke test and isolating the drain pipe inside the stucco wall, eventually going out through the roof. So really important to isolate it uh, so we're not putting smoke in the rest of the plumbing system. We're just gonna focus on this one particular drain here. Good so job. come outside here and we'll show you what the smoke injection looks like. All right, folks, now that we've capped the line off underneath the crawl space, we're outside, we're utilizing a clean out. And the reason why we wanna do it from the outside, in case we get any residual smoke, we're not infiltrating the smoke inside the home, we're actually outside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hose here and attach it in the inside of our inch and a half clean out. I like using some plumber's putty as well. And what that does is it just seals around so, so the smoke doesn't come back at us. So you just compact it like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and just use a one minute candle. We're gonna go inside and see if we're getting any smoke to find that breach in that wall or ceiling. A good tip too when you're performing smoke tests and the inside of the home has vulnerability to get a lot of the smoke. What you want to do is you want to add an air mover, an air scrubber, as well as an air um, charcoal media filtration. And what this is going to do is it's going to help remove the smoke out of the house right away. And then open all the windows and doors to allow the home to properly breathe. And that way it helps prevent uh, the lingering uh, smoke smell. Well, there you have it, folks. Right here, opened up, right where we located, and look what we found, a disconnected sewer pipe. Well, well folks, we, we found, found the sewer. sewer. All right, folks, so when it comes to a urine or defecation smell from a rodent underneath your crawl space and you can't quite figure out where the smell is coming from, first step is grab a quick little like, shovel, dig down, remove the soil about three inches to four inches down, put it in a bag, bring it outside, that way you're able to verify if the soil has been contaminated. It's a great tip to do versus making any type of assumptions. All right, folks, so as you can see here, we're underneath the crawl space and you can see the wood structure, how there's just multiple stains everywhere. Um, there is a toilet bowl right above us. So what we've used is a, a moisture moisture meter like this penetrated in the wood to verify if the uh, underside here has been or there is a leak so what we're gonna do is and as you can see nothing's wet so it appears to be uh, rat urine that's causing the smell up here as well as uh, a lot of debris that was left in the crawl space mixed with the defecation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remediate and clean this and treat this understructure here with uh, an enzyme that'll break down uh, the bacteria. And this is probably gonna take several treatments here, but we're gonna start there first to see if the smell dissipates. All right, folks, so this is what we've done. We went ahead and removed all the debris. As you can come closer here. All this debris was laying on top of the topsoil. There was rat defecation here, um, as well as more debris. And then here's our sample of the soil. So we've identified no smell in the soil, but definitely in this area here. 
Now, in regards to those stains, they're definitely urine stains from a rodent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break that down and neutralize it using an enzyme. Um, I love this stuff here. What this is gonna do, it's gonna saturate the wood, break down that smell, and then we're gonna do two other treatments uh, on top of that. We'll go over that a little bit later, as well as a fogging technology to get inside all those nooks and crannies that you don't have access to. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that now. Now, the other thing is, because we're the issues underneath the tub, what we've done is we've drilled holes underneath the tub about every 12 inches. We're going to go ahead and inject the enzyme in there as well and flood that out just to make sure that we're covering the top as well as the bottom. All right, folks, so here we are. We're now inside the house. So we started from the crawl space to identify if the soil or debris had any type of uh, defecation or urine. Now that we're inside the home, there's a vent that we have placed some plastic and concealed. I uh, want to go ahead and let you know that we love IQ Air. What this helps is it just helps neutralize the indoor air quality, gives it a safe environment for us to come in and out without the mask. So let's go ahead and put the vent, the ceiling vent, uh, to the test right here. Come on in. As you can see here, we've taped this off. And uh, this has been here for about, about an hour and a half or so. So what I've done is I've opened this up and I'm putting my nose in here. Very strong urine smell. Definitely something going up here. So we're gonna be checking this out right now. As we remove this, the smell is intensifying up inside there. You can see the insulation. So we're gonna go ahead and get a HEPA vacuum as well as our uh, uh, bags. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this uh, insulation here. All right, so once we removed the insulation, we found a rat's nest up in there. See all the debris that they're bringing in? Mm -hmm. Really, really bad smell. We're gonna go ahead and continue removing and disinfect this area here. All right, so here I am uh, about two and a half hours later after our, our treatment, and you can see the wood is completely sanitized and uh, the soil as well is turned with enzymes. All the trash has been removed. It smells 100% better. I'll be back tomorrow to do one last treatment here. Well, folks, another successful project here with the Twin Home Experts on finding a sewer odor as well as a very heavy urine rodent smell. Hopefully this gave you some insight on how to really execute and take care of those issues in your home. You're probably wondering, how much does something like this cost? Well, we've done them as high as 15,000 and as low as 2,000. This particular day was right around $5,000, what you can expect. That's the treatment, all of the diagnostic work, and some of the repairs.